Question 8. A person is parachute jumping during the time t between when she leaps out of the plane and when she opens her chute. Her altitude is given by an equation of this form. What units would b, c, and k have to be for the equation to make sense? So the first thing is that we know that this is an equation for altitude, so let's say that's in meters. That, so that's uh, um, the units that y would have to be in. And t would have to be in some time measurement, like seconds. So that's in seconds, and there's seconds there for, uh, for time. When you add two numbers together, they have to be the same units. So that, so that means this b has to be the same units as altitude, so b has to be some kind of length. Notice also that, so if I were to expand this equation out, it might be a little easier to see, where I have y is equal to b minus ct plus ck, or rather minus ck, minus ck, e to the minus t over k. Okay, so, so b is in meters because y is in meters. Okay, CT has to be in meters, but so, so that means it's something times seconds is equal to meters. So, so C has to be in meters per second. So a C is some kind of speed. We also know that if we were to, if, when we have a function like sine or cosine or, exp or exponent, when at the, the stuff in the exponent has to have no units at all. Which, so, which means that something like seconds, which is time, over something, which would be k, has to have no units. And the only way to do that is if k has seconds. And then let's see if this makes sense here. So, so if c has meters per second, k is in seconds, e so the something has no units, so the result has no units, and the stuff that's inside it has no units. So that means that this whole thing has units of meters. So that checks out. So the so the so in in summary, we get b has to be a length measurement of some kind of meters. C has to be some kind of speed meters per second. And D has to, and uh, sorry, K has to be equal to seconds. It's some, it's some kind of uh, time constant. Okay. Now, as time gets very, very big, some terms get very big, and others get small, and others stay about the same. And we want to rewrite this equation, omitting those terms that get small and keep all the others. And notice what happens here. B stays the same. Time T goes gets really big. This gets really big. As time T gets really big the e to the minus t gets very, very small. So this whole term drops out, and we'll, and, and we'll get y is approximately equal to b minus ct. Okay? And this answer looks just like something falling at a constant speed. And that speed is speed c and notice that it has the right units so what we have here is when we look for long time for so when time kind of gets really really big we have the equation goes to a constant speed so essentially the object will fall at a constant speed and thus the c is what they would call the terminal velocity which is um which is simply that the speed that you go to after a long time and when essentially all the gravitational energy that you gain by falling is lost in terms of the friction and the heat with the uh, uh, with the atmosphere and that's where the that's where that come comes into play